What's going on, YouTube? Today's video is going to be a little bit different than my normal content. So last week, I asked my followers on Instagram to send me their clones, along with parts lists and some basic info about their builds. Normally, I would show you guys my own personal builds, as I have in previous videos, but since I can't cover every U.S. service rifle in existence, I'm picking my favorite viewer-submitted clone builds based on criteria, such as the rarity of the clone, uniqueness, and overall how correct the clone is. I also told my followers it would help if the rifle had a good rattle can job or some other DIY aspect to it that made it stick out to me. My followers were also asked to tell me what entity uses their gun, whether that's a unit or an entire branch of the military or even an individual's weapon and to send me some reference photos for what they base their clone off of. And finally, I asked them to give me their insight as to what the hardest part or parts were for the clone to track down. So if you guys like this kind of content, and depending on how this video performs here on YouTube, I might even turn this into a regular series. So be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you want to see more videos like this. Also, if your submission didn't make it into this video, don't sweat it, because it can still make it into the next one. So without further ado, let's get into the first submission. Submission number one comes from at Riley Eisenhower on Instagram and is a Mark 12 Mod H or Mod Holland. I was excited to see this rifle in my inbox because although I haven't covered the Mod H on my channel before, I am a fan of these clones and I actually used to own one several years ago before starting the channel. So Riley sends the following parts list with this build. Starting off with an Allen Engineering break and collar set, a barrel from Noveski slash Superior Defense, which is a 16-inch SPR barrel that was part of a special run, a PRI Gen 3 exposed carbon fiber handguard, which Riley explains was chosen over the correct tan handguard for fashion reasons, which is fair enough. The top rail is a PRI Recce rail. The scope rings are ARMS 22M rings without the lever stops, which is clone correct and much harder to find. And mounted in those rings is a loophole Mark IV 3.5 to 10 by 40 with M3 turrets. Also a hard part to find. On top of the scope rings is an ARMS tactical ring cap and an ARMS tactical ring rail. The bipod is a Versa bipod mounted using an ARMS number 42 mount which Riley specifically stated was very hard to find. The upper is a Dymaco, as is the BCG, and he finished off the upper with a PRI Gas Buster charging handle. His lower is a GM Hydromatic A1 profile lower with period correct roll marks, and the lower parts kit is also an M16A1 parts kit, paired with a Geisley SSAE trigger. And as for furniture, he's running an Ace Sotmod Gen 3 stock with an A1 pistol grip. Overall, this is a great build with a lot of cool details and hard-to-find parts that set itself apart from something like a off-the-shelf Mod H that PRI sells. Riley does state that he plans to rattle can this rifle at some point. Moving on to our second submission, this comes from at variable this is knife on Instagram and is a cool example of a clone based on an individual's rifle. The soldier in particular was not named, but was in the 75th Ranger Regiment circa 2008. The base rifle for the clone appears to be a Colt 14.5-inch M4A1 marked rifle with government markings on the lower, and has a nice purple color on the upper, which is indicative of aged anodized aluminum. That's always cool to see. And the accessory set is really what made this rifle stand out to me, as it has what appears to be a UTG tri-rail mounted to the front sight base, allowing the user to mount the InSight M3X flashlight further forward on the bottom of the rifle. So this was not an issued part, so it's cool to see that this was probably a personally purchased part. The rifle was topped off with other commonly issued accessories for the time, including an EOTech 5.53, PEC-15, and a Tango Down foregrip. The individual cloning this rifle states that he took some artistic liberties with some parts like the Magwell, but that the base rifle is very close to being fully correct. Our third submission comes from at Beach Ballistics on Instagram, who sent in his extremely unique clone of an HK XM8 rifle. This is a rifle that is largely forgotten about in the public mind, but was tested by the U.S. Army between 2003 and 2007. Beach Ballistics states that this is not a one-to-one -one replica of a real XM8, but this is as close as anyone other than Larry Vickers can hope to get. The base rifle is an HK SL8, which was converted by Tom Bostic at Tommy Built Tactical. Tom Bostic cut the barrel down to 12.5 inches and used several G36 parts to make it a fully functional rifle, underneath Tommy Built's custom body kit, which gives it the appearance of an XM8. The optic is an InSight ISM-V red dot sight, which he states was by far the hardest part to find, 
and after being fortunate enough to track down this part, inspired him to finish out the rest of the build. So moving on to our fourth submission, this next one comes from someone who a lot of you will be familiar with, and that person is Joel from Otter Weapon Works. Joel's a longtime member of the clone community who has built a ton of cool rifles, as well as being a sponsor for the 2022 and upcoming 2024 clone rifle shoots. Joel has sent in two of his builds for this video, one being a Mark 12 Mod H, which I'll show some pictures of here. I won't go too far into detail on the build list since I just went over that with a previous build, other than to point out that his Mod H has one of very few, or possibly the only, real issued uppers that's in civilian hands. So this Mod 12 Mod H upper came from an actual issued rifle. At this point, you almost can't call it a clone because it doesn't get any more authentic than that. Joel's second submission is his Mark 17 Mod Zero, which uses a Belgian Scar 17S as the base rifle. This is a very similar configuration to the Scar I built in my Mark 17 Designated Marksman series, link in the description, and it uses the PWS SRX rail extension along with a loophole Mark 6 3 18 by 44 which was issued as part of the ECOS package. Unlike my rifle, Joel has opted to incorporate the Aimpoint T1, which mounts on top of the scope. The suppressor Joel's running is the Surefire FA762SV, and the rifle's been finished off with a classy rattle can job, which, if you check out Otter's page on Instagram, you'll see he is no stranger to. Submission number five comes from at subpar28 and features the rifle that tamed Baghdad, the Delta MRE. These rifles were seen in use by CAG in early days of the Global War on Terror, starting in about 2003 until they were phased out in favor of the HK416. These rifles were essentially a M4A1 with the addition of several unique parts, uh, first and foremost being the Knight's Armament MRE rail. Also commonly seen on these rifles was the Lone Star Ordnance A2 pistol grip, a Colt N1 stock with a John Mason recoil pad, and a Gen 1 ready bag. The optic setup on these rifles incorporated a LaRue LT101 riser mount with either an EOTech 551 or a Schmitten Bender short dot mounted on top, in LaRue LT-123 rings. And what's really cool about this clone in particular is that a homemade flashlight foregrip combo, commonly referred to as a gangster grip, was made with period correct components that would have been available to CAG 20 years ago. This next submission comes to us from at the GWAT Aesthetic and is once again based on an individual specific weapon, in particular the SR-16 E3 front sight base used by Rockstar turned Army Ranger turned Green Beret Jason Everman. While Everman was first known as the guitarist from Nirvana, he later joined the military and was photographed on more than one occasion with this very unique rifle. This build uses a Knight's Armament 14.5 inch SR-16 E3 front sight gas block upper and a pre-sample depot lower, which the owner states he is planning on swapping out at some point, presumably for the correct KAC ambidextrous lower. This build is described as a work in progress, but that it's getting there with the recent addition of a PEC-2 Alpha. I knew when I saw this build that I needed to include it in the video, and I cannot wait to see it when it's finished, especially if the owner mounts the grenade launcher seen in some of the reference photos. Our seventh submission comes from Luke Upholstery Inc., and is a clone of a Mark 12 Mod Zero. This is another rifle that I haven't covered much on the channel before, despite the fact that I used to own one. Luke's build list is everything that you would expect from a Mod Zero clone, starting with a Douglas 1 in 7 twist 18-inch SPR barrel, an Allen Engineering AEM-5 suppressor, a PRI handguard, PRI flip-up front sight gas block, PRI gas buster charging handle, and an ARMS number 40 rear sight, all mounted to a Colt upper receiver with an M16A1 profile lower. The optic setup is a Leupold Mark IV 35 to 10 by 40 mounted in ARMS number 22 rings with, again, the tactical ring cap and the tactical ring rail, which he states were the hardest parts to track down for his build. As for the paint, he states that he only used one color, that being Krylon khaki spray paint, showing that sometimes simpler is better when it comes to paint jobs. The final submission for this video comes from at Honky Kong 3.0, who sent in his 416 Recce build. I always like seeing these builds. Personally, it's the only 416 clone that I'm currently interested in building at some point. Uh, this build uses mostly HK brand parts, along with a remarked Brownells BRN4 lower receiver. The suppressor is an Otter Creek OCM-5, another sponsor of the clone rifle shoot, and that OCM-5 is mounted to an Allen Engineering brake and collar set. The optic setup is a Night Force NX-8 1x8 sitting in a Night Force ultralight mount topped off with a Wilcox ruler ring cap mount. The owner states that his barrel was cut down to 13.1 inches by D. Wilson to get the correct length and profile for this build, 
and he finished it off with a unique but undeniably cool Arctic paint job. After seeing all these cool clone builds, do me a favor and tell me which one was your favorite down in the comments section below. Did any of these inspire you to start your next clone project, or give you ideas for ongoing ones? Like I said at the beginning of the video, let me know if you want to see more content like this in the future, and I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.